Welcome to Really Old Movies, I'm your host Harrison Scullin. Today I'll be reviewing another Cary Grant film, The Bishop's Wife, from 1947. So now I'll discuss my thoughts on the plot, the acting, directing, cinematography, special effects, and the music for the film, The Bishop's Wife. Now, this is a first time watch for me. I've never seen this before. And from my understanding, it's kind of a forgotten Christmas film. You don't see it too often on favorite Christmas movies lists. And the first time I ever heard about this movie was on the Warner Archive Collection podcast back when they did that and they discussed this as kind of a forgotten gem so today I'll as I review each of these things I'll kind of answer the question of is this truly a forgotten classic or is this just best left in the past so to start off with the plot I gave it a three out of five I thought it was okay but I really wish the roles were reversed my wife and I, we kind of discussed this a little bit, but the story really should have been a greedy bishop relearning the true meaning of his choice to build the cathedral. The The plot itself in this film was kind of weird, kind of all over the place, and to be frank, really dry and boring. I, I had a hard time following along and really liking or paying attention to it. So because of that, I gave it a 3 out of 5. It, it was okay. Um, now, acting wise, I gave a one out of five. It was, it was pretty bad. I cannot see Cary Grant as an angel. He's just not believable at all in that role. I really think he and David Niven should have switched roles, where Cary Grant is a greedy bishop who's um, only in it for the money. You know, seeking to build the cathedral for financial gain and then the angel be david niven which would have been perfect I, I really think they should have changed it around they were not not good in those roles it really should have been reversed and i think it would have been a lot better but because it wasn't that way i just couldn't get over the fact the whole time that Cary grant is an angel <laughs> you know <laughs> i don't know if any of you've seen <clears throat> I don't know if any of you've seen any of his other films like To Catch a Thief or North by Northwest, but Cary Grant is not an amiable, you know, really soft-spoken, nice person. He's kind of a little bit of a diva <laughs> and uh, kind of gets into funny situations. So I had a really hard time believing him in this role. It, it was just not suited for him at all. Um, the role David Niven had was okay. I, I I could see him playing that role, but I really do think it would have been better if they were reversed. And uh, now that leads into directing. I also gave it a 1 out of 5. I think he made very poor choices in regards to the actors. Um, he should have reversed them. I really believe that. And the... The rest of the effects and the choices they made in this movie were just really odd. So that leads it to the cinematography and special effects, which I gave it 2 out of 5. It's okay, not great. You could really tell in some scenes that the special effects were very poorly done. It was a very poor budget. Um, it's very obvious that Cary Grant's hands are not the ones playing the harp. Um, I, I just... I just had a hard time with the with that as well. It was just not very good and it was not very engaging. And lastly, the music, I gave a 1 out of 5. Really awful, especially when the angel was using his quote-unquote powers. It plays some really weird, sad music when it should be more of like a hallelujah chorus, you know. It should be more joyful. It just felt really weird and I just did not like it at all. So, what does that do? That brings this letterbox score overall to a 1.6 out of 5, which I'm going to round to a 2 out of 5. This is a terrible movie. <laughs> I really wanted to like it. I was very disappointed in it, and I'm very sad that 
Cary Grant wasn't as good as he normally is in this movie. I definitely, th I definitely think it's a stinker of a movie. There is a reason why we don't hear about it too often, why we don't see it. It's because it's just not that good. I, I don't get it. I don't get the love for it. I think it's a weird movie, and I think it's, I think it should stay in the past. This is not one that needs to be made into a, a classic. So yeah, overall, I did not like the movie. I'm sorry guys, I really wanted to, like I said, but it was just too disappointing. So those are my thoughts and feelings on The Bishop's Wife from 1947. Thank you all so much for listening to today's episode. And make sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook to get some day-to-day uh, -day updates and insights into the week's particular film. And you'll find us at Really Old Movies. That's R-E-E-L-Y, Old Movies. And new episodes of the podcast are released Fridays at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, for the most part. <laughs> That's the that's the goal anyways to have them come out then. And the this is released on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and pretty much anywhere you can listen to a podcast. And uh yeah, again, thank you all so much for listening to today's episode. I'm your host Harrison Scullin and this has been Really Old Movies. Take care. <laughs>